What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. Quality of life changes are small updates that really help Riot bring the best out of champions that might maybe be struggling to compete with some of the newer, more polished champions they release. To keep champion designs really interesting, Riot have to create new mechanics and different ways for abilities to work in their new releases. In the process, they learn a lot about the way champions should feel and play, and these changes are really aimed at making champions feel fresh and fluid. Today's top 10 is going to list our favorite quality of life changes that Riot has introduced so far. As always with our top 10s, we'd love to hear your thoughts about our list, so definitely leave us a comment if you disagree with something. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button, and if you don't, hit that dislike. And a huge shout out goes to ProGuides.com for helping me out with the editing on this video today. They recently released a new service that allows you to ask questions to higher ranked players and get a response almost instantly actually. And I think it's pretty damn cool, but you don't have to take it from me because they actually have a free trial that gets you full access, so you can check them out and decide for yourself if you like it or not. And without further ado, let's get started. Starting off our list at number 10 is a two for one deal as we've actually grouped two changes together since they kind of did the same thing and it's the change shared between Lux's E Lucent Singularity that received a small quality of life buff on patch 5.12 and Gragas's Q Barrel Roll which received a similar change on patch 3.14. Lucent Singularity is an aimed ability that sends out a projectile that slows once it reaches the target. It can then be detonated to deal magic damage in an area of effect but because of its slow, predictable movement, it was kind of easy to expect where it would go and to avoid it. And the change allowed Lux to be able to activate her E again while it was in flight, causing it to instantly detonate once it arrived at the target. Although the ability was still avoidable, this really helped reduce the wait time before casting it and dealing the damage, and allowed players to catch more people in the area of effect where they might otherwise have missed by a fraction of a second. It's a really cool change that helped the ability feel way smoother and way more reliable. Barrel Roll worked in a similar way being a targeted magic damage area of effect ability but instead of a slow once it reaches the area, Barrel Roll builds up damage until it's detonated and then slows as it deals the damage. Gragas received the exact same treatment, the change giving him a small buffer just before the barrel reached its destination where Gragas can reactivate the Q to detonate the cask when it arrives. It's not quite as fluid as Lux's E because he can't immediately choose to re-detonate it after the cast but that's probably better for him actually because unlike Lux, his barrel increases in damage the longer he leaves it at the target, so having that small buffer just before it arrives when it can be set to detonate early is ideal so that Gragas doesn't accidentally miss out on a ton of damage. Next up at number 9 we have Alistar who had a quality of life change on patch 6.3 that allowed him to queue up a pulverized cast during his headbutt ability. Input buffering is an important part of using your abilities quickly in League of Legends, but the problem is that it's really difficult to do with a high ping actually. Alistar's Headbutt Pulverize combo is core to him as a champion, but without perfect timing and a lower ping value, it was really difficult to time Pulverize to knock up an enemy before the Headbutt pushed them away, and this meant that Alistar players were way more reliable on lower ping, and it really isolated some people from playing the champion entirely. This quality of life tweak allows Alistar to queue up his Pulverize cast during his Headbutt so the player doesn't need to worry about ping or timing affecting whether they will successfully combo or not. Riot made this change on patch 6.3, so somewhat recently, but it's caused a significant increase in the number of Alistar players overall, as well as also causing a very significant increase in his win rate. Being able to use this combo is less important now, so players can spend more time learning about the rest of Alistar's strategy, such as when to initiate and how to zone properly. It's a great example of what makes a quality of life change so valuable. A small tweak can open up a champion to tons more players and help develop them into more reliable champions and just make them a little bit easier to play. Number 8 is Caitlyn with her ultimate, Ace in the Hole. On patch 5.11, Caitlyn received a quality of life buff that caused her to gain sight of a target immediately after activating her ultimate on them rather than after she takes aim. Caitlyn's ultimate has a small cast time of 0.25 seconds before she started taking aim, but oftentimes, an enemy champion would just walk outside of your vision range just as Caitlyn started to line up her shot, causing you to lose sight and cancel the ultimate. And with this tweak, once Caitlyn settles on a target to fire at, she gains vision of the target instantly, so that brief cast time will no longer affect whether she gets to fire or not. It was a pretty logical change for a sniping champion and it really helped avoid those frustrating situations where your ultimate would get cancelled even though you managed to target an enemy that was in range. At number 7 we have Syndra with a change to her Force of Will ability that made it feel way more responsive. 
This change took place on patch 150 and it caused Cinder to pick up the nearest dark sphere in range if she didn't select another target. It was pretty annoying to be too slow when picking up a sphere because you couldn't target one instantly and this change helped new Cinder players come to terms with the champion. That's not all though, she also had the grab time reduced to 0.25 seconds from 0.33 speeding up the process slightly along with a tweak to let her queue up a throw command during the grab. This worked a little bit similar to the headbutt pulverize change from Alistar. Originally Cinder had to pick up a sphere and then recast the ability to throw it after she had grabbed hold. But with this quality of life change she could choose a location to throw the grabbed sphere or unit before she had finished grabbing it, giving her a way smoother throw and allowing faster use of the ability. Force of Will isn't exactly a super powerful ability by itself, but by allowing Cinder to reposition dark spheres or slow a target much more fluidly, follow up abilities like Scatter the Weak became much easier to use and much more intuitive. Cinder had what was probably one of the weakest releases ever, and changes like this really helped turn her into an awesome champion that dominated the meta. At number 6 we've got another 2 for 1 deal with a shared tweak that happened to Cassiopeia and her Twin Fangs along with Ryza's Rune Prison and Spell Flux. The Twin Fang change happened on patch 6.2 so before Cassiopeia's rework but it did carry over into her new form. Twin Fang was quite a frustrating ability to use because it was so spammable while also requiring a target. This meant that you always had to mouse over a target to use the ability and stay moused over them when you wanted to cast Twin Fang. And that would be fine, but Cassiopeia would have her auto attacks and movement commands cancelled by casting the ability, so essentially you had to move your mouse to move and attack at a ridiculous speed to be able to use her full DPS and just click all over the place. The quality of life buff stopped her Twin Fang cast from cancelling movement orders, making it way easier for Cassiopeia to chase down an enemy while still attacking them with Twin Fangs. Spammy champions need to feel fluid without being impossibly hard to play for the majority of the player base, and changes like this really let them make the most of those spammable spells. Both Ryze's Rune Prison and Spell Flux abilities were an exact same story. They used to cancel his movement command, so although you would manage to snare or damage a target, you'd have to click away again to keep moving towards them. It was just a lot more difficult to do both things at the same time. And after the change, both will cast without cancelling an issued movement command, meaning that you'll still move to where you want it to be. Those are some pretty nice changes and they really helped lower the skill floor of those two champions without affecting the highest levels of play. Breaking into our top 5 today is Vagar with a change to his event Horizon. Patch 5.6 saw a change to that ability that caused champions with dashes to actually stop at the wall rather than moving through them and then being stunned after the dash. Event Horizon is made to be a zoning tool that will punish an enemy for moving to a particular position or possibly for trapping enemies inside if they're close enough. Before the change though, champions with dashes like LeBlanc could just dash right through the wall to gain distance from Vagar or to jump on top of him first. And this made Vagar ridiculously difficult to play in certain matchups because he could just never probably zone control some champions with the way the ability worked before. Being able to stop those dashes dead in their tracks is a super awesome change that really helped bring Vagar into the spotlight and allowed him to properly punish the enemy for not positioning wisely. Next up at number 4 we have a change for the AD carry mains amongst you with Callista's martial poise change from patch 5.1. Callista's release caused kind of a split in the community, half thought making a passive that caused a champion to constantly orb walk was kind of broken, while the other half thought it was a really cool take on how to help AD carries kite properly. Whatever side of the fence you were on, martial poise did have a drawback though. Once she decides to use her basic attacks, she's stuck with that decision, even if she dies in the process. And although this change in question didn't let her cancel her basic attacks, she can now choose a different target to attack during the windup, so she wasn't locked into auto attacking one particular enemy for such a long time. The windup felt really punishing in situations where you accidentally clicked the wrong target, or maybe if you had slow attack speed, and this change was really noticeable in making her feel smoother in trades and in teamfights especially. Target selection and kiting are really important for AD carries and this change meant Callista players had control right up until their spears were thrown. At number 3 is Nidalee with a change to her pounce that players had been hoping to see in the game for years. As with Riven's Q, Nidalee's pounce originally used to cast in the direction that Nidalee was facing, so she had to change directions that she was moving before actually casting her pounce. This wasn't a big deal for players who were adjusted to the champion and just kind of used to it, but for new players it meant that failing wall jumps and jumping away from a kill that you were chasing happened just constantly, and it really discouraged players from playing her and made her extremely difficult to learn. Patch 4.10 caused Nidalee to jump towards the mouse cursor instead. 
This meant that reactive plays were way easier to pull off, requiring just one click of the ability rather than two clicks, one to redirect your movement and the second to actually jump. We can imagine it was pretty weird for the super experienced Nidalee players to get used to after so much time spent changing direction first, but I think we can all agree that it was a well-deserved change that really helped take away some of the stress of playing an already ridiculously difficult champion. Next up at number 2 we have the spell slinging 80 carry Lucian with a change to his passive from patch 3.12. Lucian had a seriously cool kit that was really impressive on release, but it had a lot of problems and was really clunky to play. His passive Light Swinger rewarded him with doubled up auto attacks after using an ability, turning him into almost an AD caster that worked auto attacks into his spell rotation. And this was an incredibly cool and interesting take on the AD carry role, but with one severe drawback. His passive would never trigger on different targets, meaning it wouldn't trigger twice if the first target died. This meant after using an ability to activate his passive, he'd aim for two quick auto attacks usually to CS minions. The problem was that if the first basic attack killed the minion, he wouldn't have a target and that second shot would just be directed at that minion that was dead, and he'd completely waste the bonus attack from the passive. Riot dealt with this problem really quickly, causing him to automatically queue up a second target if the first one died. No more missing that CS, and along with this change in specific, Lucian also received a lot of improvements to the targeting or the way the targeting on his passive worked that helped him out quite a lot. This quality of life change really pulled together Lucian after his release, as on the day of his release he had been one of the most underpowered AD carries we've ever seen, and this passive was probably one of the biggest changes that helped him become one of the most meta dominant AD carries of all time throughout the years. And finally in our number one spot we have Azir with a change to his Shifting Sands gap closing ability. Patch 5.24 saw some bug fixes for Azir but his quality of life update definitely stood out the most. Azir is incredibly mobile for a mage, a control mage especially, and the synergy between his Q and E meant that he could pull off some amazing moves that usually go by the name of the Sharima Shuffle. It's a fan favorite playmaking combo that Azir players love to abuse whenever they get the chance, but it did have one big weakness. The problem was that before this change, Azir's gap closer, his E, would pull him towards his soldiers faster than his Q would actually send them out. The combo worked by dashing to his soldiers, then directing them to a new location, causing Azir to swoop around and then follow them. But when he traveled faster than his soldiers did, you'd catch up with them and you'd end your dash halfway through in a really awkward spot. The only way around it was to delay your glide by a lot, leading to some really awkward situations where you would get caught out before you could escape or just totally fail the combo completely. Riot recognized the sheer awesomeness of the maneuver though, and made it so that Azir will follow his soldiers to the end point of his queue whether he catches up to them or not, so it made the Sharima Shuffle doable for everyone. As one of the flat out coolest gap closing techniques in the game, this change really just made Azir so much more fun to play, and that's really what quality of life updates are all about. It's all about making the champion more fun, making them feel better when you're playing them, and so this was definitely one of the most important quality of life updates in that sense, and it was absolutely the best choice for our number one spot. And that wraps up the end of our top 10 quality of life changes in League of Legends. Really hope you all enjoyed it and we'd love to hear about your favorite changes if you think we might have missed one. So leave a comment and let us know. That's going to be it for me. If you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe if you want. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.